Hey guys and welcome to part 14 of the F1 manager Minardi manager career mode where we're trying to take Minardi to be the best team around and things aren't looking that promising at the minute well obviously for the remainder of this season anyway um next season things should be interesting but unfortunately we got to get through these next four races before we can head to next season where things should be a bit more um promising but we got the Italian Grand Prix coming up um, which is technically the team's home Grand Prix, so that should be a very interesting race. That is in two weeks' time, so as per usual, we've got two weeks of exciting news in F1 to get through and see if there's anything interesting. So, I'll see you for any news, so I'll see you then. Okay, so hey guys, so we have got some news. We've actually got quite a lot of news, really, but I mean, lots of it is sponsorship news, but we've got Prost confirm Patrick Lamarie, which obviously... I um, mean, the last episode we saw Williams were rumoured to be getting him as their driver for next year, well, their test driver for next year, but it turns out it's going to be Prost who are going to have Patrick Lemurray as their test driver next year, which means I, I believe all of their driver slots are filled up now. I think most teams' driver slots are filled up, to be honest, um, at this late stage of the season. And we just got lots more sponsorship news, really. And um, yeah, hang on. So yeah, we have got some more news outside sponsor news. So we got Williams confirmed Thomas Enger as their test driver. So obviously we just saw it's not Patrick Lamary as was just rumoured. It's now Thomas Enger who's going to be Williams' test driver. Then we've got statement from Stewart that is that they're getting Luciano Luciano. I don't even pronounce that Luciano. I'm going to say Luciano. Um, but yeah, they they confirmed Luciano Berti as their test driver, so we got a lot of test drivers being announced um, this step, uh, this episode, and that's it, the rest of it is just sponsorship news, that's, yeah, the rest of it is just sponsorship news, which, well, a lot of sponsors staying committed to teams, but, well, there you go, and, yeah, we've got to renew our sponsors, so, we've got to renew Rossi's, obviously they want to renew it, because obviously they're happy with um, the performance of the team, well, not when I say the performance, but more the, um, because obviously we give them a ton of assistance, which keeps them happy and keeps them wanting to renew the contract, and same for Feza, no, Freza rather, and I believe both sponsors are Italian, which I suppose is good for Minardi's all Italian image, um, so let's just apply, oh, how many sponsors did we give them? I think we gave Freza nine. Oh, they make office furniture. Well, there you go. That's something I didn't know. What about Rossi's? What do they make? Inline skates. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember a joke about the inline skates. I remember now. Um, but yeah, and now Gabriel Chidozzi, again, as I said, even though he's leaving us to go to Salba, um, he designed new front wings and rear wings for us last episode. Now he designed a new barge board. So let's go and start manufacturing that. So we're going to stop manufacturing the third model which is rated 93 and start making the fourth model which is rated um 94 so slight aerodynamic improvement to the car and to us we need all the improvement the car can get really um because we haven't really got good drivers or um engines really or brakes for that matter um but <laughs> well there you go and we've had to pay our um our 12 percent no our, not our 12 percent our well, our one twelfth of the salary to everyone. Where can we find that information now? That's there, isn't it? Yeah, I've had to pay another twelfth of our salary to everyone um, because it's the start of a new month, and we've still made nine point three million dollars profit this year. So it's looking good, even though we're spending a lot more money next season. It looks like we've saved so much that we should be in the clear, actually, even though we're spending so much. You know, we've got 15 million, and we're going to keep on earning more for the next four races from um, sponsorship and merchandising, or licensing as it says there. And you never know prize money, yeah, we got 300 grand prize money at the Imola race. Um, if we're extremely lucky, then that might happen again. Um, hopefully so, but anyway, I'll see if there's any more news between now and the Italian Grand Prix, so I'll see you then. Okay, so hey guys, so we have got some new news. It's just two bits of news, actually. It's just Hewlett Packard. Um, oh, that's HP. Oh, I get it. Okay. It's just Hewlett Packard, I didn't know, but HP 
I was um, back in VAR, which I'm pretty certain 2000 season onwards, or definitely around the 2000 season, HP was sponsoring Williams, but there you go, this game's not accurate to real life at all, so that's fine. And we got another test driver announced, that's our fourth test driver this episode we've had announced, and it's um, Jordan's test driver, and it's Bruno... God, not another name I can't pronounce. Um, Bruno Jonquera? Jonquera. I'm guessing so, yeah, Bruno Jonquera. Anyway, so that's the news for this episode. And we've just had lots of test drivers announced. I mean, no big news really. So it's, yeah, every single bit of news has been test drivers. Am I right this episode? I think it has. Yeah, it's all been, yeah, it's all been test drivers, yeah, because we've had Patrick Lamari, Thomas Enger, Bruno. Junquera and the other person <laughs> I can't even remember who it was now um, Luciano was it? I can't really remember too. it says test driver so it's not that important because they only ever use it test days and we never see how well the other teams do at test days and I never go to them myself so frankly test drivers, well our test drivers aren't used that much anyway in real life F1 but they use they used even less um, in this game, they're basically not used at all they're basically pointless that's why I've got the cheapest person I can get as my test driver. Um, but anyway, yeah, Italian Grand Prix. Um, it's a good Grand Prix, the Monza track. It's, it says it's legendary. Um, a brilliant race. Should have, it should provide some brilliant racing. Obviously, it's going to hamper our team. I mean, because we, because <laughs> we got the Ford ZTEC engine. That's not a good engine by any stretch of the imagination. Um, especially with all these straight lines, because obviously uh, Monza is very straight line heavy in person like the track is like 70 or 80 percent full throttle so not going to help us but hopefully we've had new aerodynamic parts recently also the front wing and rear wing but also the barge boards since the last race hopefully that aerodynamic improvement should be able to help us in a straight line and especially this Minardi's home Grand Prix you never know might get some good stuff happening in our favour maybe getting in the points or at least Pross not getting in the points um yeah and obviously it's changed since well I mean it hasn't changed but I mean obviously nowadays it's, it's got um the first corner is a bit different back then as it was now but it shouldn't make any difference to us and hopefully hopefully we can just sneak it to some points so I'll see you for the practice report run Monza. So I'll see you then. Okay, so the practice session around Monza in 1999 has just ended, so let's take a look at the results. The Tafosi will be happy with Michael Schumacher in the Ferrari coming first, with Mika Hagnan and David Coulthard coming just behind in second and third in the McLaren. The Tifosi won't be as impressed with Eddie Irvine who finished 4th, Damon Hilden lined up 5th for the Jordan, and Ralph Schumacher lines up 6th in the Williams. Heinz Alfredson is 7th with Zanardi in 8th, and Johnny Herbert is 9th with Fisichello in 10th. Lunds Barrichello comes in 11th, Alexander Wurtz in 12th, both BARs of Villeneuve and Zunter in 13th and 14th. Olivier Panas outpaces his teammate for one of the few times this season to be in 15th, with his teammate down in 17th and Diniz splitting the two cross in 16th. Mark Chenet and Luca Padoa and the two Minardis come 18th and 19th. And Pedro De La Rosa is the slowest person to complete a lap down in 20th. Two people were unable to complete a lap this practice session. That was Jean Lacy and the other Sauber, who never seemed to make it past the start finish line for unknown reasons this practice session. And Takaki retired shortly after leaving the pit lane with what is a suspected engine failure in the arrows. Takaki, go on my son, do us all proud. <laughs> oh Takaki, we love you. Oh, we really do. That was brilliant. That was the best thing I've ever seen. Well done. Well done. Well done, Takaki. So with two cars not finishing the practice session, it's not looking good for the upcoming qualifying and race at Monza. And this may well become a race of attrition.
Okay, we've just had the qualifying hour end at Italy, so let's take a look at the results. Tafoshi won't be quite as happy this time around with Mika Hakkinen lining up first and Schumacher lining up just behind in second, but Tafoshi will still be cheering him on regardless. David Coulthard then lines up in third in the other McLaren and Eddie Irvine lines up fourth. The two joins of Heinz Howell Frensen and Damon Hill line up fifth and sixth, with Heinz getting the better of his teammate, unlike in practice. Ralph Schumacher is in seventh, Bruins Barrichello is in eighth, and then both Bertens like ninth and tenth. Zanardi is a few places off of his teammate down in 11th, Johnny Herbert is 12th, Jacques Villeneuve is 13th, Jean Alessi is 14th, Ricardo Zonta in the BAR is 15th. We then see both Pross of a Panis and Trulli down 16th and 17th, with Panis again getting the better of his teammate, which we haven't seen that often this season. Both Minardi's line up 18th and 19th, and that's despite the fact they went off at the first corner. And that's after Team Boss Pierce Lint rules Tom to risk everything. And again, that risk hasn't paid off this race, much like in other races this season. Pedro Diniz lines up in 20th, and De La Rosa is down in 21st. And you'll notice again, only 21 cars finish, and that's because Takaki again wasn't able to complete a lap. And that's because Takaki went off at the first corner, in similar fashion to the Minardi's. But if it's suspected engine failure for the arrows, it's going to worry De La Rosa and it's also going to jeopardise Takaki's season and prospect of getting any more points for the drive which has surprised us the most this season. Okay, so hey guys, so we've just had the qualifying session end and some interesting stuff. And uh, you know, I predicted the arrows might not have enough engines to last the whole season and seemingly Takaki has run out of engines already and that means De La Rosa must be on his last one because well De La Rosa must be because um, if, to, if they don't have any more to fit Takaki's car that means there must only be one engine left and it must be the one in De La Rosa's car so that's good because that means if we outscore Prost no if we outscore Arrows and then that means we overtake Arrows in the Constructors, that means we're guaranteed to come 10th, because it seems like Arrows might not finish any more races. They might finish this one with De La Rosa, but that will be it, really. Um, so we'll have to check out and see how that goes. And I said this might be a race of attrition, and it's proven that way, with only 20 finishing practice and 21 finishing qualifying. Um, with both of our drivers crashing out in qualifying, but that was after the, um, our time to risk everything, so... It's fair enough to be honest, it's nothing new, but we've got the race strategy there, Jeanne Ping in a lap later than Padoa, and that's pretty much everything really, and, it's, and we were able to out-qualify um, a Sauber, which is good to see, and let's just head on to the start of the race. Oh, um, I shall keep it in this camera in light of um, the Belgian Grand Prix, which keeps on crashing every time we're in the TV camera for that. I'm going to keep it in this camera for the time being. Just because I'm wary of it crashing and then the whole recording's just gone to pop. I'll take it to the TV camera now. And we, there's been no crazy overtake, um, overtakes at the start of the race because we have seen some crazy stuff at the start of races and we haven't seen anything yet which is always good to see. And... No, the field looks like it's got off just as um, quickly, no, in the, sa in the same positions as it started, and is this Takaki retiring with an engine failure? <laughs> yeah, it is. I don't know why his wheels are locking up, um, no clue, but there you go, that just confirms Arrows have an engine failure. Well, no, they've run out of engines, which I suspect it may happen, but they've run out of engines. De La Rosa must be on the last engine the team has, which means, well, if he finishes this race, that'd be amazing. If he finishes any more subsequent races, would just be a miracle. Um, but there you go, that means Arrows are basically eliminated from the championship. Because they can't make enough engines. Even Ford Z-Tech, even though we have the worst engine supplier, at least they can make easily enough engines to last the season. Arrows, even though they're only making engines for themselves, they can't make enough, which is weird, especially as they're the worst engines anyway, which is often baffling. But anyway, um... Yeah, there's, look, De La Rosa's already, like, a second behind the Sauber already. Just shows, but actually, we're pulling away from that Sauber 
quite a lot actually, and bearing in mind John Lacey wasn't able to complete a lap in the other Sauber in um, in practice. It shows you, you know, maybe the Sauber isn't that suited to this track, which would be a massive benefit to us really if um if we're able to outpace um or out rely have better reliability than the Salbers and that'll be really good. Um we could play the first lap and for like the first time ever this season nothing that interesting happened on the first lap. Well apart from Takaki's retirement, apart from that. It's a pretty bog standard normal lap. Yep, there you go, engine failure. That confirms it. And we'll just speed up now. And Mika Hacken has got past. Oh, I don't think the Tafosi would be happy about that, but um this track's a very very high speed track it's as i said i think it's about 80 percent full throttle so it's going to favor the mclaren's with their engine and mick hackenen oh no he's he's gone out driver error which is weird to see from um the two times world champion although actually if he doesn't win the world championship this season in this game um i mean technically he'll only be the one time world champion as far as this game's concerned anyway um which would be an upset so he's in the best car um, yeah, because David Coulthard isn't looking like he's going to win it, especially if he slips down to third, which you really wouldn't expect. And who's that? Eddie Irvine's had a driver error. Oh, no. No, to well, to his Eddie Irvine was, <sighs> I don't know, I, let's say a disappointment. That's, it sounds quite harsh to Eddie Irvine, but he was a bit of a disappointment for Ferrari, so it seems fair enough. But say where he leaves... He's, um, Ferrari don't retain him for the 2000 season anyway, and even in this game he's going to Stewart next year I believe. Which is actually pretty accurate to real life anyway, so that's fair enough. And Ricardo Zonta's gone out in the BAR, De La Rosa's gone out of electronics, oh that's disappointing, but I suppose it saves the engine for them. What's that, Genet's out with tyres, that's one of the few tyre retirements we've had this year. Or is it the only one? And Schumacher, Ralph Schumacher's out with driver error. That seems fair enough, what about the Pross? Um, Olivier Pans is out of an engine failure, but Trulli is still in it. And Trulli is very close to the points, so are we. No. No, we can't have Trulli getting in the points. Unless we get into the points as well, we can't really be doing with Trulli in the points. We've had a lot of retirements. Look at the amount of engine failures. I mean, this track does put a lot of stress on the engines, and we've had suspension failure. Oh, no. No, that means. Oh, that means we can't score points. We I hope Trulli doesn't, and. I don't think he will, I don't think there's enough laps left for people to retire. Top two have finished, and where's Trulli? No, no, come on, we don't win the last minute of retirement, no. Thank God, Trulli just outside the point. It's weird, two retirements, and we did fit brand new parts that started the race to both cars. I mean, tyre failure is nothing to do with us, but Luca Padova's suspension failure, that is disappointing, to be honest, with a suspension failure, but whew, I can breathe now. So we're still 10th in the constructors. Arrows seem to be out of it. Because, well, I mean, they had an electronics failure, which I suppose saves their engine. But, that's... You know? Until we outscore Arrows, we're not safe. By no means are we safe. Yeah, because we've got to get two more points to be ahead of Arrows. Because they've had a fifth position, which is better than us, and they're ahead alphabetically. So, yeah. Um... Yano truly just about not getting into the points, which is so lucky. Jacques Villeneuve, I've never been so happy for him to get into the points. And Damon Hill, obviously our future driver, well, for next year, getting third place where his teammate, or his teammate had an engine failure, to be uh, to be fair, but Damon Hill coming third. Shows promise for our team next year. What about, oh no, of course, I was about to say, what about our other driver, but of course Mika Salo isn't on the grid. And a lot of retirements. I, I did say this might be a race of attrition, and with only eight cars finishing, none of them being us, it really was a race of attrition. But David Coulthard winning, Michael Schumacher in second. Tafosi won't be happy about that, especially them finishing a minute, over a minute behind the McLarens. Tafosi won't like that. But at the end of the day, the McLaren is the dominant car this season. Just. Mika Hakkinen seems to be throwing away any opportunity he gets. Which, you know, isn't going to help him to win because uh, the drivers. I think actually he's losing. The, well, he's, come, he's second in the drivers now. I think Schumacher's pushed ahead of him. But yeah, David Coulthard comes first. Which is obviously good for his season. And we've just got some race reports. 
car two no problems. Yeah, it's probably because our car didn't retire due to its own fault. That was tires. That was nothing to do with us. That was completely external and partially worn, heavily worn. Well, yeah, of course, the he and, uh, of course the suspension's heavily worn. Actually, that's one thing. I will replace the suspension because I will forget before next race. There you go, brand new suspension. And as you can see, no failure on Janae's car because that was tires and that's nothing to do with us. And where well, the race supports us there. Um, we have the most advanced electronics, yeah, because we're using the best in the game. And McLaren. See, McLaren have the most advanced everything. And yet, Mecha Hakkinen seems to be throwing away every opportunity he gets. Which is very unlike um, the Finn. And we've got over 1.9 million in sponsorship and merchandise. And it says no one was impressed. I'm not impressed. One of the failures wasn't our fault. One of the failures was the team's fault. So that's quite disappointing, and we'll get an update on the championship. Yep, Schumacher is ahead by four points, and you know Hackenden is throwing away these opportunities. Um, he's got the car to do it, we've seen, but he's throwing away every single opportunity, and that's there's a point for him. But crucially, Padoa is there hanging in in the drivers' championship ahead of his teammate, ahead of Deniz, ahead of Panis, Delarosa, ahead of Yano Trulli, which is very impressive. So I like Yano Trulli, I think he's a great driver. Oh, well, yeah. And Ricardo's on to last. Well, it's only because of his surname, to be fair. But then again, he's in a BAR. He really should be getting points. I mean, Jack Villeneuve. Yeah, Jack Villeneuve's got five. It says a lot about his teammate, doesn't it? And crucially, we're still 10th in the constructors because Prost haven't scored any. And as long as Prost don't score any for the next three races, then we're fine. And it says a lot about the team, really, to be honest, how we're hoping other teams don't score points for the championship to go in our favour, but I think it says a lot about the team at the minute. We are kind of clutching at straws, to be honest. And again, well, until we outscore Arrows. I, I Seriously, this when I started this series, I thought, OK, as long as we beat Arrows, which we should, we'll be fine. No, it hasn't come down to that. It hasn't come down to beating Arrows at all. It's come down to beating Prost, which is... This championship's gone to pot. But I mean, I suppose one thing that hasn't gone to pot is McLaren the lead in the constructors. That's about the only thing that has gone right in this series, really. About the only thing. And. Yeah, yeah, manager ratings. We're in the middle, as we have been most of the season to us. Peter Sauber's now rated the worst manager. Um, that's quite. I don't know, actually. Well, Petra then is really didn't perform in qualifying or in the race, to be honest. I think we were ahead of him for a large part of the race. And actually, during practice, um, Sean and Lacey weren't able to complete a lap. So, that's fair enough. And Tom Walkinshaw is rated quite low, which is unfair, considering his team's got two points and is ahead of Minardi and Prost. But there you go. That's the way this game goes. And that's it, really. That's, that's it um, for... The Italian Grand Prix. So we're next where well, we got a test day at Magni Cores, which I'm not going to bother with. And if Arrows bother with that, well, they're stupid because they don't have enough engines anyway. And if they, if they go to that test day, they'll use up that engine, then they'll have nothing, and that'll be that'll make my day. That would, to be honest. Um, but yeah, we got the Nurbur well, the European Grand Prix. I can say the German Grand Prix, but it's the European Grand Prix around Nurburgring, which. It's interesting. It's an interesting track. It's all right. Obviously, um, nowadays, when it turns the 2015 season, the fate of the Nurburgring track and, in fact, of um, Hockenheim, both of these tracks, um, the future of both of them and their fate in F1 at the minute is, is uncertain. But at the end of the day, it's just uh, Bernie being a bit greedy. But anyway, that's irrelevant. We're on about the 1999 season, I suppose, the fake 99 season. No, we're going track. Interesting track. It's it's all right. It's not one of my favourites, and I think it's unfair. Germany have two Grand Prix. Why don't why can't Japan? Japan have two great tracks. Why can't they have two Japanese Grand Prix? Or I don't know. I think there's other countries which have two brilliant tracks, and Germany don't really. Why England? We could have Brands Hatch again. That'd be brilliant. But <laughs> that's that's a different topic. Um, but yeah, it's a great track. Regardless of the fact, well, it's all right. Regardless of the fact, I don't really want um, that. I don't really like it. We gotta go to it anyway. And you never know. If we score some points, it I probably will like it a damn sight more than I do now. 
but that is in two weeks time as per usual yep yeah two weeks time the 25th of september is when practice starts and should be an interesting time there so i'll see you in two weeks well not t no okay i won't see you in two weeks i'll see you next week i think the next f1 manager video will be out yeah i'll see you next week for the nurburgring grand prix which is in two in-game weeks time yeah i think they've got that. yeah i've got that right yeah anyway i'll see yeah i'll see basically i'll see you next time for the european grand prix around nurburgring so i'll see you then